Now, from the station on your side, this is Wavy News 10. Tonight, setting grim records, we break down the local trends as we see big increases in COVID-19 cases in North Carolina and Virginia. Plus, candy cane communication. How Virginia Beach's town center is overhauling Santa traditions in a concession to the coronavirus. And an annual tradition continues despite the pandemic. How Operation Homefront is making sure families still get a good holiday meal. And we could be seeing the impact of the Thanksgiving holiday on the spread of coronavirus. Both North Carolina and Virginia reported record increases today. Thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Chris Horn in for Kayla Gaskins in Virginia. The health department says part of today's big increase was because of a backlog. In North Carolina, it's the second record in three days. The Department of Health and Human Services reported a little more than 6,000 new cases. Hospitalizations continue to climb in the Tar Heel State. The percent of tests coming back positive is steady, around 10 percent. Meanwhile, a data backlog has Virginia reporting its highest one-day increase in cases of coronavirus, nearly 3,800 new cases. Hospitalizations have been mostly steady over the last few days, but remain at record levels. The percent of tests coming back positive in Virginia is at its highest point since May. Locally, Virginia Beach reported 234 cases today, Norfolk 58, and Chesapeake reported 47 new cases. For many families, visiting Old St. Nick is an annual Christmas tradition, but with COVID-19 concerns, Santas are testing new techniques to interact with kids. In Virginia Beach's town center, that includes coming up with a whole new communication system. Ten on your side's Madison Glassman has that story. The coronavirus pandemic has changed so many things about 2020, but the holiday spirit here at Virginia Beach Town Center is not one of them. Check it out. You can still see Santa Claus greeting people in his socially distant snow globe. Ballerinas, a glowing Christmas tree, and of course, Santa Claus. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Bye. The Candy Cane Communication Network came up with a touchless two way communication system where people can step into this gingerbread house and see, talk, and take selfies with Santa. And what's a 2020 Christmas without a little Santa tizer, right? Even though we have the social distance, that we're still able to still be here and we can still have fun. This is the third year the snow globe displays can be seen at Town Center, but socially distant Santa is a new addition. Despite the pandemic, the holiday spirit is still in full swing. What's on your Christmas list this year? Like like a spy kit and an Osmo creator with a coat and glitter tattoos and everything else. It's fun how we get to watch all the people in the globes and talk to Santa and take pictures with them. If you want to join in on the fun, this is going to be here every weekend through New Year's. Reporting at Virginia Beach Town Center, I'm Madison Glassman, 10 on your side. 10 on your side is your local election headquarters. We now know who Democrats have chosen to run in a special election in Norfolk next month. The Norfolk Democratic Party selected Angela William Graves to run for the 90th district seat on the House of Delegates. She narrowly beat out Rick James, a former Norfolk detective and NAACP executive. She'll run against whoever the Norfolk GOP chooses as their nominee. The election will be held January 5th. As we've reported, the seat is vacant after former delegate Joe Lindsay resigned to take a judge appointment in Norfolk. Time now to get a check of the weather. Here's a live look from Tower Cam 10 over downtown Portsmouth. Temperature dropping out there this Saturday night. Meteorologist Jeff Edmondson is in the Super Doppler Weather Center. Jeff, just how cold are we going to get overnight? Uh, we'll probably see low temperatures in the 30s. We're already in the 30s in a couple of spots tonight. We have the clear skies now. We had cloud cover earlier, and we still have that breeze. It's not as windy as it was today, though. We had really strong winds earlier today. But now we have clear skies. You can see the moon here at the top of the view. Uh, we have that breeze that's creating a little bit of a chop over the water right now towards Lynn Haven Inlet, and that's going to be with us for tonight. As we'll see, our temperatures dropping into the 30s. We have a wind out of the northwest right now, about 5 to 10 miles an hour. We'll probably see a light wind out of the northwest continue tonight and tomorrow. A wind will still be out of that same direction, about 5 to 10 miles an hour again. So that's going to keep us a little bit cooler tomorrow. It's all because of the storm system that's creating that northwesterly flow. Here's the center of the low near Boston and out over the water right now, south of Maine. They're getting a lot of rain and snow from that storm system. But for us, there are some clouds out there, but we also have clear skies in other spots too. Looking pretty nice for tonight. Just cool.
Temperatures will be cool as we start our Sunday into Sunday afternoon. That's noon there. Sunday skies will have a lot of sunshine for your day tomorrow. Temperatures will be in the upper 40s in the afternoon. We're in the low 40s to 30s right now. Here's a little preview for tomorrow. Blue skies, winds out of the northwest, high temperatures in the upper 40s. There's some rain on the way for our Monday, maybe some snow towards uh, Roanoke. Interesting weather coming up. I'll have that in just a little bit. Thank you, Jeff. All new at 11. Williamsburg firefighters are trying to figure out what sparked an apartment fire. Crews responded to Berkeley Lane around 7 tonight. They found flames in an apartment over a garage. Crews quickly got the flames under control. One person went to the hospital, and that person is expected to recover. And new tonight, Virginia State Police are investigating two different deadly crashes. The first happened around 4.30 yesterday afternoon on Route 137 in York County. It's near Airport Road. Police say 18-year-old Eric May II tried to pass another vehicle when he sideswiped a car driving in the opposite direction. May lost control, ran off the road, and hit a tree. Paramedics rushed him to the hospital, though he later died. The second crash happened around 5.30 last night. It was on John Clayton Memorial Highway in Gloucester. That's near Patriots Way. State police say a private paving company closed down the right lane to unload paving equipment for a job. Two of the company's vehicles were stopped in the lane of travel to help with paving. Investigators say a Subaru SUV stopped in the open lane to avoid hitting the vehicle when a Toyota Tacoma hit it from behind. The driver of the Toyota, Charles Miller, died on impact. Toyota also hit another vehicle that was stopped. The driver of the Subaru and her two children went to the hospital. They're all expected to recover. No charges have been filed at this time. Hertford police took three people into custody last night after a shooting led to a chase and car crash. This started around 10 when police responded to King Street and Stoke Street for a reported shooting. One person was hurt and is expected to recover. Officers discovered a stolen, stolen red sedan that may have been involved. Officers found that vehicle and chased it into Elizabeth City where it later crashed on North Road Street. The driver and two passengers were detained. They went to the hospital and should recover, and police recovered at least one weapon. Another passenger ran from the crash. Hertford police are still looking for him. If you know anything about what happened, call them. We are just getting started here at 11. Coming up, a mother's plea for help. We'll have her message as deputies in Gloucester County search for her missing daughter.